So I'm going to call this May 22nd meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission to order. We have four planning commissioners present, make that five, this one's joining. Um, and we're going to jump into the agenda, which uh, the, the next item would be approval of the agenda. Um, so we can get a motion to approve the agenda. I'll take it. So moved. So moved by John Adams. Do we have a second? Anybody will do. I just had not seen it. I'm looking. I, I I second. All right. So we have a second from um, Gabe. Um, I actually I should note that uh, there are some slight um, changes actually from the agenda. And so to the to the extent um, the extent that this matters, uh, it's just a procedural thing. But we may as well say. Um, John, if you would amend your uh, uh, motion to approve, but with the change to number five on the agenda to change that from economic development and energy to uh, housing, natural resources, transportation, and utilities and facilities. I will amend it as the chair has suggested. All right. Thanks, John. So we have a we have the amended motion. Um, just to clarify that we'll be covering different chapters than um, than than what's on the agenda, and that's just because of what ended. Like you know, Mike wrote the agenda ahead of time, and then what ended up being actually ready for us to look at were different things. Um, so that's why that's why that that change being made. Um, okay, so we have a motion from John to amend uh, or. Or he just amended the motion. Gabe seconded. Um, do we have? Uh, uh, all right. So, who's in favor of approving the amended agenda? Say aye. 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 Uh, do we have uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Amended agenda approved. And again, we'll be covering housing, natural resources, transportation, utility, and facilities. Or number five, which is going to be the storyboard outlines for the language that's going to be going on to the city plan website. Okie dokie. Uh, so with the agenda approved, we'll go to the comments from the chair. Um, I don't believe I have anything um, that we're not going to get into later. Uh, does anyone else have anything to bring to our attention? Okay. So moving on from that, uh, general business. Uh, do we have any members of the public who are here to talk about something that's not on the agenda? We have no members of the public, so we're gonna pass on. Unless uh, unless there's anyone there in person, I think we had um, you know Mike Miller, Mike Miller, the planning commissioner, or the Mike Miller, the planning um, director, is out for tonight. He's not going to be joining us, so some other staff had to set things up in City Hall, um, but they're not connected right now. So I'm going to take that to mean that there's no one else at City Hall uh, who, who's from the public who wants to talk to us. Um, okay, so yeah, we're on our own tonight without Mike, um, which is fine for what we got to cover. Uh, the first thing is a review and approval of the storyboard outlines. We'll start with the housing chapter language. Um, I went in and made some changes today or or just noted some things for us to talk about to, to change. Um, I did make some changes that were just a, a, like proofing type changes. Um, I saw that Maria had also left some comments, at least in the transportation chapter. Maybe there were some other comments that showed up I didn't notice yet, um, but let's just hop in. I'm just gonna share screen and we're gonna go through it. Um,
Okay, everybody see the housing chapter. Okay. Um, so this came from SC Group. Uh, it's based off of the chapter language we provided, but I have noticed some additions and changes and things. Um, I'm not sure that I've caught all there is to catch. So I'm hoping that we can review and work through this. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that we could go in and we could talk about the things that I've flagged, but if people wanted us to take some time for everybody to individually go through and look for stuff to flag, I would be open to that. Um, so I'm just open to suggestions about how we want to proceed. Any thoughts? We should we want to start with the flag stuff. Um, okay, we'll start with the flag stuff. You guys can hear me, right? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right. Uh, okay. So first thing I flagged here is the, the first sentence is having a safe place to call home is a basic necessity. I, it feels like for a housing chapter, we could start off more like about planning or more about, I mean, it's just not a safety oriented chapter. So it's just like, you know, awkward to me a little. I mean, this this was in here in the original and um, we didn't change it before, but um, now that we're seeing that it's, you know, set up to possibly be on the website, I'm wondering if we could, uh, I mean, the general idea seems fine. Like, it's important to have a home. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have a suggested change or or ideas? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me that we would just say something like the city of Montpelier needs to plan for housing growth and you know something like or to house its employees and I I don't know something I. Can't come up with it right now, but I agree. Maria, did you have a suggestion? Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, just changing it to like housing is a basic necessity, <laughs> you know, um, take out some of the editorial. Um, but I think Ariane, I like Ariane's idea better. Okay, Ariane. Uh... What do you think? Um, what What were some of the other the ideas that you had there? It seemed like you had a few. Oh me, <laughs> I yeah. was just uh, yeah. Now that I, right, I think now that I'm actually verbalizing it. Um, I don't feel like I have a, it, it'd be good to have something short, but I, yeah, I like what you said about we're focusing on kind of what the city should plan for or think about maybe, and I don't, yeah, it was going a couple different ways. Um, so, I don't know. I don't have, but I, I need a few minutes, I guess. If anyone sure. has anything so, else, jump in. <laughs> I, I just threw down something to work with um, that's trying to fit some of the stuff in. Um, housing is a bit of the commission when this was discussed. I almost feel like I wasn't around when the, this was pre, pre Gabe, I'm thinking. Um, this was pre Gabe. This, the housing chapter was pre Gabe. Um, so we need, we need some Gabe. 
Well, I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I know you're starting at the top here, but I just, you know, like we can have a, I don't know where we seem to be leaning really forward onto this homelessness issue, which is really a, a state and national level problem. So I'm not sure how much this chapter gets into that, but I mean, I, I was on a board of a homeless shelter for a number of years. It's, this, is a, this is a big problem. It's not Montpelier's problem to solve. We can advocate for it, but um, I just don't know how much the rest of this, it looks like that's almost like a secondary goal of importance. And I know there are people in the community that feel that way, but um, I, I, you know, I don't know that that's, you know, this is a, this is a massive national problem. Right? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you, that you um, took it to be focused on homelessness. Cause that's actually, I don't think that that's the um, plan for this sentence. It's no, no, it's not that. I'm just looking at the next, the two bullets below this paragraph. The second bullet, the housing for all approach, not the part you're editing. Okay. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Yeah. 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 No, okay. We yeah, we can jump ahead to that, and 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 I can I could definitely update you on the thought of why those those are the two main goals that are under the aspiration for the chapter. Um. Uh, so let's get to that in a minute. So, so right now I have like housing is a basic necessity that requires concerted effort and planning. That was off the cuff. Um, was that going getting to what we were talking about? Any ideas to improve it? Well, if you just actually, if you just started with the location and quality of persons housing as the beginning of the uh, section. Mm-hmm. And then it mentions what you're basically were saying, what you just wrote in that final sentence. I mean, okay. So, so I don't know if you need to tee it. Sentence. Yeah, I don't know if you need to tee it up anymore. I mean, that second sentence kind of articulates why housing is important, and then it says, "Then you need planning because that's essential." Okay, people good with that? Just, just cut the first. All right. Leave a comment for okay. Um, so that's the first paragraph. Uh, now let's revisit what Gabe brought up. So, yeah, these are the, the general goals. And let me oh, this is one we, we had multiple aspirations, okay. Um, so amount of housing is an aspiration, neighborhood features like walkable, um, close proximity to, to certain amenities, second, third, housing in neighborhoods would be safe and healthy, energy efficient, resilient, um, and then the fourth is housing for all. So back up here, these two bullet points are capturing the first one's like the first three aspirations and the last one is the fourth aspiration. Um, and I think the thought is that the first three at least have a lot in common with each other. So that's why they're kind of lumped together, but the fourth one is quite different. Um, do you do you have concerns, Gabe, with like having the two bullets up front like that? Is they think it's misleading? No, I don't know. Like when you, I, I've never seen this before Kirby, so. Like, I, I don't know, I, I just read that and I I just had some emotions about it. And then I when we went down below, like when I look at the strategies, it looked fine, actually. Can you go back to that? I, I just, you know, I just hate if we feel like we're biting off all of Central Vermont's, you know, homeless issues because it's a it's a big issue. And, it, you know, most of these folks aren't from here. But that's, you know, it's fine. We can talk about it. But when I looked at what was down below... I think it's a little bit further down. I think it was one of the last ones, Kirby. It just um, this housing for all. I mean, I I don't have any issue with any of that. Uh, did you have any like like well since since these these bullet points are up in the intro that brought you to like a a place? Do you think it's misleading to have it up here? Or are you are you fine? I think you could just delete. I think you could just say people living in vulnerable circumstances, like. That's me like that, you know, then we can have a conversation about what's our, you know, how do we do that? 
what can we afford to do? How do how do we work with other people in the community to do that? Yeah, that's that seems that's fine by me. I mean that the homelessness thing and the recovering from drug use thing has to do with like two of the strategies we have. Um, but you know, we don't normally call out just two strategies, you know, because every chapter is dozens and dozens. So um is everybody good with the shortening that sentence to, to that? Deleting the highlighted part here. Yeah, not hearing any objections. Um, okay. Let's see, planning. I have a question about the, oh, you have you moved <laughs> in the, the previous section? It just seems like a bit, I mean, maybe Montpelier does have a severe housing shortage, but it just seems to be a, a little over the, I don't know, overstating things, you know? I mean, it has a housing shortage for sure. I think severe is maybe just adding a, a bit too much, again, that editorial quality to it. Like, is there a way to measure how severe a housing shortage is? Um, I guess I guess my thoughts about that are, when I joined the Planning Commission six, seven years ago, whatever, we had a housing shortage. And before I joined, we had a housing shortage. Mm -hmm. And everyone said we had a housing shortage. And we have, you know, rental vacancies that are really alarming like like the vacancy rates are you know very low and, and alarming because like it's just so hard to live here and so expensive and then not really anything was getting done and yeah. and then now like like there's been more attention in the last two three years um and a lot of that has to do with like national attention and and it's gotten worse and like the market's pretty crazy um for anybody who's trying to get in it's like it's gotten it's definitely like how like you know, house values have shot up in the last two, three years a lot. So like, I'm okay with severe, especially if it's like, if we got to call it severe to get people's attention. I mean, I'm, I'm with you about the over the top thing because it's maybe counterproductive to be dramatic, but. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't here. I know there was a whole commission that was looking at this. So I don't know if some of that comes from there, but I will say anecdotally, I know like, uh, you know, from an educational perspective, we're having a hard time hiring teachers that want to live here because they can't find a place to live. And CVMC is also having a hard time finding people that will work here. So, you know, we're paying a lot of money for traveling nurses to, you know, pay crazy amounts of rent for short-term rentals and stuff because they can't house employees. So I'm okay with severe. I, but again, I know there were people, it wasn't the planning commission, right? There was a housing task force or something. Um... The chapter language, like like the Housing Task Force came up with the first version of the aspirations, goals, and strategies, but the but this chapter language stuff is um That's you know good. first drafted by Mike and then amended okay. by me. Um and, and then and then approved by the planning commission after that. Um, I'm okay either way. I'm okay if we took it out, I'm okay if we leave it. Yeah, and I would say there's no like quantify the way to you know there's no mathematical equation for severe but vermont is like so has so underbuilt compared to the rest of the country or maybe not to new england but so underbuilt for the last few years that i would say it is severe and like i don't know if this belongs here but this is also like where we have failed pretty badly as a community like in a hundred years, if we go back to like the 1920 years, 1901 census, uh, census, like our population is the same as it was over a hundred years ago. And the majority of the growth has, has been in our, in like the Montpelier, you know, suburbs. So growth is happening all around Montpelier and we have not stepped up to the task of providing ideally more than uh, more than our share of housing given that we have all of these energy goals and we know that building housing in and around 
are walkable downtowns is going to help meet a lot of those goals. I don't know. I, we don't need to like jam all of this in here. But. Yeah. Does it make sense to add something then, based on what you guys are saying, that Montpelier has faced, has long faced a housing shortage, you know, to make it show that this isn't just like a current issue. This is an issue that has been going on for maybe decades. And like that it's an opportunity too. It's not just yeah. like, yes, we failed, but that there, there's also a huge opportunity here. There's like, demand and that let's try to make it forward looking on I like that. That's good. Well, okay. Do we want to drive it home any more than that based on our discussion? Or so I just changed it to Instead of saying it faces a severe housing shortage, it now has faced a housing sh shortage for many years that will only be overcome, et cetera. Um, well, you could say that has faced a housing shortage for many years that has become severe or has, you know, that we have now kind of reached a point where something has to be done. Um, it's gone unaddressed. I mean, that seems like pretty self-critical people, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. I'm good at being self-critical about the city, as you know. Um, Do you, do you have a thought about it, Maria, or anyone? I know, I'm trying to think of, and maybe that just turns into two sentences. Montpelier has faced a housing shortage for many years that has now reached, you know, not a crisis, but, you know, uh, that has worsened in recent years? Or that, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I'm not in like the housing world. <laughs> so, Ariane, do you have any ideas? Oh, shoot. Um, sorry, I was distracted by eating some dinner. <laughs> Still <laughs> eating my dinner. Um, what? So, what do you, oh, to just like working this sentence? Um, but we made it two sentences, and um, so you know the first one. Popular's faced a housing shortage for many years that has worsened in recent years, or, or that's recently worsened. So I don't use years twice in a row. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that sounds good to me. I, yeah, I guess my only concern is right, just. To the extent that we can, if language is meaningful, to right, just draw attention to it and what we need to do. But I, I think what you have there sounds okay to me. Okay, we can go with that. Um, yeah, my main concern in reviewing this is just to make sure that the, you know, ideally we'd have a professional editor, so we're having to fill in that um and so this editing stuff is um no i guess if i was going to put our goal for tonight or my goal for us tonight um in a uh humorous way it would be to make sure that we do not look like we're bush league um so anyway um, okay, so we got our we got our uh, bullets here. We got the, so the planning context. Um, this sentence, I think, is, is this sentence is new. Um, 
uh, I don't know, thoughts about us calling ourselves charming. Um, this is, I mean, I think, I think, I'm pretty sure this came from the consultants. So at least they called it our town charming, but um, readers won't know that. I think I had. Yeah. I, oh. oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I agree with you. I I do not like it. Can we just say something simple like Montpelier is a, you know, a, an important central city of, I don't know, or central Vermont, that's redundant, but um, yeah, just as it do, if we need an intro sentence, just to say that it's a, you know, got a downtown, a vibrant downtown. If we have to say something intro, sort of about Montpelier. I can pull up our previous version to see what it did say. Um, this is the planning context. So we have this stuff that that was apparently cut that was I'll just I'll just paste it in the comment. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean right right up to the housing, what we had that was like some context for that is I don't know, maybe, th maybe this part is fluff. Maybe I should have looked harder, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete that because that's not actually like very substantive. I think um, you're just looking for like a sentence that, <clears throat> that describes Montpelier's current built environment. So I think just like the city of Montpelier has a vibrant downtown core surrounded by several uh, neighborhoods and maybe even say like historic districts. Um, I think it's just supposed to just be one sentence that describes to anyone what Montpelier looks like. Okay. You know, I think it's supposed to just describe. Yeah. <laughs> just like lay it out there. This is what the city consists of. Say it again and I'll type it. Okay. The city of Montpelier. Um, either consists of or contains a vibrant downtown core. And you can say that includes the Vermont State Capitol or Vermont Capitol Complex surrounded by And then surrounded by several distinct and historic neighborhoods. Okay. I like that better. Everybody good with that? Um, okay. Uh, uh, so I'm going to move on because um, I, you know, try not to drag this out too much, although it is kind of chargery a little bit but um so a couple things about this section and i and for the other pages i think we'll want to talk about this but I definitely want to talk about it for this one so the next sentence is the company map shows the current densities of housing units um i i just because we were trying to get away from density and people think about density all the time like i know it's a it's a jargon word that has a meaning and that it's not in, incorrect to use it here but we can also like just not put that in people's minds and we can just say distribution 
of housing units in Montpelier. Are people good with that? Um, okay, so here's the thing. Julie had done this comment about ideas for maps for this. Uh, recent proposed potential projects, location of subsidized housing, and create a housing unit density map. Okay. So I have some feelings about number two. I don't think we want to call out subsidized housing. There's stigma attached to that. And like, and, and what's the, what's the goal there is to like brag about building it. Cause it's like mostly, you know, not the city. I mean, city works with nonprofits, but anyways, it just seems like, I don't know. Um, I feel like we can do better, especially focusing on what our like planning goals are. Right. Um, so like if they can make a map of areas around the downtown that have high potential for infill development, you know, um, whether that would be, you know, undeveloped land or just neighborhoods that are, you know, more spread out than, um, than other areas around the downtown. Um, I don't know, looking, looking to brainstorm map ideas. Hint, hint, John. So you're just looking for what map to put here that would have like make the most sense. Yeah, do you know how like they're trying to put like maps on every page, but like what kind of maps are the most appropriate? Like what should we encourage them to try to to include for the housing page? What think, oh, sorry, John. Go. I was just gonna say, I think what might be nice is like a um, a housing map that is like a thematic map that shows building footprints colored by decade of when they were built. And you can, we can sort of see the evolution at a glance of our housing development. It tells like a number of different stories. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of something that's like simple. That's amazing. I totally want that. Can you do that, John? Yeah, I, I, I think I uh, totally want that. I think um, as long as I can grab the camera data and just sync it up to the parcels, or uh, depending on what building data we have, it shouldn't. It should be. It should be fine. Okay, that's that's great. That and that would look really cool. Um, I was gonna say like a dot density map of the type of housing and where it's located. So like um, apartments or single family homes or you know any other configuration of housing. I think would be interesting to see where that's located. Or like, you know, because we keep talking about how there could be more, you know, one or two bedroom housing, because that's what people really need. Um, and so what currently isn't being, that, that demand currently isn't being satisfied. So I think that that could be informative. I don't really know what it would look like. Um, yeah, the, it, it it could be interesting. I think I think that's all we could probably pull out, though, would be if it's just like zoned as single family or multifamily, like, or if we know, but I, I believe like, like single families that have an ADU that actually has multiple units or even a duplex, we won't, I don't know if we'll necessarily even know like how it's actually being used. Um, but at least single family versus multifamily we could do. 
I think it would show not a lot of multifamily. I have, I, I'll try to dig this up and I don't know how much this plays into the housing chapter narrative, but I feel like it should be someplace in the plan. And it looks at um, essentially like the value per acre and the value um, looking at neighborhoods and when they were built. And the, the interesting part is like ever since we adopt the city adopted zoning, like the housing we built since then required you know, three times as much infrastructure. So for due to our like regulations, like you needed three times as much sewer pipe and three times as much road frontage uh, on average. And um, we basically have, you know, required inefficient housing construction since the, the 50s and 60s and how some of that older housing around the core like or the multifamily housing you know more than pays for itself when we think of it in terms of its um its value per per piece of infrastructure right Yeah, it would be interesting to maybe make a note, you know, for when Mike's back around. I don't know if you have to have a separate EMS address if you put up an ADU, but I, you know, I've heard the arguments that you know all this, you know, action to allow ADUs hasn't created a lot of housing. But somebody put up an awesome map in California, one of the cities. I don't know if it was LA or San Francisco or something, but it was there was a lot of it showed how many ADUs have been built since they've past their statewide legislation and there were a lot of housing units. So if there were a way to track it, it might be, you know, because that's a that's another way to increase housing, right? Is if we have more ADUs. I, mean, I do want to figure out a way for us to measure, especially, you know, going forward, new housing starts here. The um the 2022 census population estimates just came out and I noticed Montpelier hadn't moved any, and a lot of that's driven off of the their building permit survey. And digging into that, I noticed, you know, they had uh, one one unit for Montpelier permitted in the past year, and I was like, that can't be right. And digging further, it looked like it was imputed, and no one had re replied to like the census survey from the city in the past, at least in the past year. So, and then I, I also previously tried working with our the, the software company that does the city's permitting software, and they have no open API, nothing we can read or connect to. So, like, we have no idea what's being built, and we talk about how this is a priority, but we we just have no clue, like, how many homes we're building or not. It's all just panic data. And it seems like we need to just say, like, no, like, we, this is a, if we're going to measure anything, you know, on a regular basis, like, let's, let's do this. And it's not very hard to do. And obviously, that we should be reporting to the, to the, the census building survey, because that, that drives what the population estimates are. So if we're going to be underestimated on population growth and all these other numbers, that, that's also a problem. But, um, I, I digress here. Yeah, I think you should at least talk to Mike about that to see. Um, I did. I did send him an email this week. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, maps. Do we have any ideas about specific maps? I mean, I think the two that we have there could be enough to get them going. Um, and how about there? It seemed that they wanted to show a map of the recent proposed and potential housing developments. So I don't know if this is going back to what John just said, but I mean, would it make sense to highlight like the 
like the Northfield Street housing stuff, like the stuff that's currently kind of like in a pipeline. The, the, my issue with the like recent proposed type stuff is I just don't have a whole lot of confidence that this is going to be updated all the time. Hmm. And I'm just imagining somebody 10 years out being like, oh, somebody was proposing 10 years ago this thing. Like, that's helpful. Um, like, yeah, so in the places where they're trying to, like, flag specific things that are, like, snapshots in time, like, I, I think we should probably avoid it unless okay. we really are committed to being diligent to updating this thing. And then the, the last paragraph, do you want to just take that out? Um, to the extent that the whole thing's in there because of a map they plan to make, then yeah. Um, are people good with that? I'll leave a note. Okay. Okay, looks like we gave them a lot to like to chew on and we can see if they come back and say that any of them are doable. Um, okay. So the synergy section, I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't have anything there. If anybody else has anything. I didn't I did not spend a lot of time coming through this today. So um any any help with catching things would be great. All I could tell from this is that I think that most of this was pulled from what we gave them at least. Yeah. Um, um, just one thing that I would mention, I, to me, I find the term community services a little bit confusing there because I think they're really talking about municipal services, right? Like educate, I mean, to me, community services mean something different than I think they mean there. I don't know. I just find that term kind of broad. Yeah, that that's more, like, yeah, thank you. But these are just their aspirations and goals. I didn't I didn't go through. I'm assuming that they are stated as we pass them uh, with no changes. Um, 
but for those who are newer, uh, and there's a lot of folks who are newer, um, you know, housing's a big issue and going through the aspirations, goals, and strategies for the housing chapter is definitely something I would recommend everybody know what we're going to be bringing to city council on this issue and, um, you know, whether, whether our strategies are going to be effective enough, uh, to deal with the, the big problem. Um, So these bullets were pulled out from the um, strategies. It's not all the strategies, but it's it's the ones that were chosen to be pulled out from. But just to make sure that we these are the ones we want to focus on. I I did it be it would have been nice to have loads of time today, and it would have been nice to pull up strategies and pick out what I thought were the most important, or you know. But this these are some of the some of them. Um, and these who's involved sections like has been something that the consultants seem to be wanting to make sure that we include I mean this is not something that was a big part of the chapter language we had passed before um, I mean I guess it's fine there might be people who are curious about this so it's not like you know, I'm assuming that they plan to make some kind of like emphasis, like a draw attention to these things that are in highlights. You know, so just want to make sure that we agree that these are the sorts of things we want attention drawn to for that match like what our goals are for the plan. In this case, they say the housing committee is been part of developing 124 units and the number of subsidies it's like for some reason yeah there's a big focus on subsidized housing and homelessness in this which is not what our chapter is mostly about um yeah kirby for this whole section it it just seems very convoluted who's responsible for managing housing in the city of montpelier it seems like that's just like a quick like the planning department, the housing committee, you know, it's just like that there's like a simple, it's a simple question and there's a simple answer to it. And I think they can go into detail after answering the question. But right now it's just kind of like large blocks of text that you kind of have to like read all of it to see who is actually managing housing in the city of Montpelier. And then when you get to the planning department, it is like you're just saying. With several for-profit and non-profit housing partners to develop projects within the city. I mean, the planning part department also plays a direct role with homeowners and anyone. <laughs> it's not just like, you know, commercial properties. So I found that this section kind of confusing, even though it, it seems like it's supposed to be straightforward. Um I agree. I, there's just a bunch here. <laughs> I don't know if we want, I mean, do, should we leave them some general feedback to try to make this more succinct? Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking of suggesting they could just do to make it really succinct. They can make it bullet points of different stakeholders. Um, I don't know if that. I don't know if that would end up looking good or not. Though we'd have to just kind of have to try it and see it. But um,
the, the these sections that they're they're creating this come from like the past planning document because when we were going through the chapters i remember looking at goals and and strategies and not having a lot of this conversation so i wonder where they pulled all this from it's like there's stuff at the bottom of the plan language that we had um most of this is being developed though by them or maybe Mike's giving it to them like um outside of outside of things I'm not sure um yeah I mean what we passed for the housing plan language was a summary of past efforts and then it, there's two sentences about the planning department partnering with different organizations and then a list of those organizations that were just named that are that are um, subsidized housing developers um, and then the city and regional housing partners have worked together and then with a list of some assessments that have been done recently that's that's it um, it's it's a lot less words and content than what we were just looking at Although if the, if the now, now that I'm scrolling is, up, I, I am seeing that they're part of this was the housing task force was described farther up in the document. So they they pulled that from. Yeah, pro the probably the all the historical stuff. I mean, I would think if somebody's looking at this as they move into the future and they're trying to figure out, OK, I have this particular issue. Who would I engage with or what could I get involved with that deals with that it's sort of a bullet? A list of the stakeholders with what their responsibilities are that could be helpful but it doesn't need to be like you know a couple of pages long yeah um do you mean to do, should i mend this note or does this cover what you're saying gabe the planning commission prefers these sections to be shorter and succinct um and i said maybe just mention the stakeholders maybe the stakeholders and their functions and that that would be good Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I was planning to leave a note on. What kind of things do we want called out? Things. I mean, of course, an obvious thing that comes to mind is like to call out things that show the need for our housing, like the lack of housing growth or the vacancies rates for rentals. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that seems like needs to be drawn out because that's like facing the truth of like what we're facing right now. Um, not like boasting about building subsidized housing. Um, just, um, Are you guys okay with me mentioning the things I just said, or do, are there other ideas of things to call out? I think if we were being aggressive, we could say like, did you know only 40 units were built last year? I don't even know if it is 40 units, but you know, <laughs> I think to the heart of how little housing is built every year. Any other issues? You know, I, this wasn't, I, I wasn't here when you guys talked about this. I think I jumped in at economic development, but I will just say somebody's working on some projects. We're, we're getting to a place where um, it, without private public partnerships, I mean, only the most affluent people are going to be able to live around here. I mean, it's just the, the cost of, you know, a lot of material costs have come down since, you know, COVID created some supply chains issues but the uh, the infrastructure costs are almost double what they were uh pre-2020 
And so I think we're going to have issues on this everywhere, you know, whether we're looking at the, you know, Country Club Road or any of the stuff that people are trying to do that, um, you know, and it's it's a debate for our whole country, right? You, you can all read the reports about New York City and it's like, well, boy, I mean, if you have a third of these buildings that need to be demolished, who's responsible for that, right? Like, how do, how do we work on that? And I think, you know, again, I don't know, I don't need to be ideological, but I think just the idea that there's, there's going to need to be a work. Uh, a cooperative effort between private developers and and the city right we may have to put some money into certain things if we want to see some things done so and, and i think we could probably there's probably some very clear data that shows all that gets built is either housing for the you know fairly wealthy and public housing like that's it like most of the housing in Montpelier that's been built probably in the past few decades has all been public, done with public dollars, with the exception of, you know, pockets of single family homes that are extremely, have been extremely expensive to build. You know, and I yeah. think there is somewhere in here, you kind of scrolled through it. I don't remember if I saw TIF financing, but I think TIF is certainly you know, something that can be used, but the, the uh, you know, even just like this Act 250 stuff that was brought up by um, uh, Habitat for Humanity, right, the NDAs, I mean, that, that could save hundreds of thousands of dollars of permitting fees that aren't necessary if we're, if they're building where we'd like them built, right, walkable neighborhoods and stuff. So, I mean, if we're going to highlight, if that stuff exists in here, those are things I would think, because that's, TIF is a private-public partnership, right? The, city's going to invest in certain areas um, and offset, you know, the the cost of the infrastructure with property taxes over a period of time. So those are things that, you know, we could highlight. Um, okay, I'm going to add that to the note. I think uh, Montpelier, yeah, Montpelier gave up its TIF. It had, it had applied for TIF and had one, but then didn't use it, if I recall. And then I might be getting this parcel wrong, but um, uh, but I think we plan to get a new one for the Country Club Road. It, or that's you know that's not set in stone. That's that's the thinking. Um, Okay, uh, so I think we can, so we left all these comments, feedback, changed some things for SE. I think we can move on to the next chapter unless anybody else has a housing thing. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Let's go in the order they're in in the file, which means natural resources is next. Um, okay. So for this one, um, this seemed also to be some more intro language that looks like it was drafted by the consultants that um, like people kind of just describing an ideal version of Montpelier, like from like a postcard version, like we had with the last one. Um, and uh, I went back and looked at what we had written originally and I kind of liked it better, not saying it's like the best thing or anything, but um, so instead of saying Montpelier is a city among mountains, rivers, and farmland, um, we had Montpelier's unique natural setting influences both development patterns and the character of the city. 
Montpelier's urban core is centered at the confluence of the uh, Winooski River and North Branch and the North Branch, while development stretches along the river valleys and up the surrounding hillsides. So that's descriptive, but I thought, I don't know, I, I preferred that over what was there. Um, do we have thoughts? I like the alternative too. Okay, I'm seeing a nod from Brian, so I'll just plug that in. Um, Um, I need to delete this comment, but uh, don't don't love using Montpelier rights. Uh, I don't. I just have my own connotations. It just seems snobby. It doesn't. The people that I've heard use that word, but I think we can do better on on this one. Um, by the way, I mean, I skimmed over it, but the, I think these bullets about the goals are fine. They're just describing short, like in short, what the goals are about later on. Um, and since this is language, I, I, since this is gold font, I, I take it they plan to like to pull this out. Um, oh, and I and I did have alternative language here, which is something else I pulled from. Um, I think I pulled this from our other document. So instead of this, uh, I mean, I don't even think it's accurate to say that we, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, so instead of what's there in the gold, um, I pulled out this other language we had, we had done. Well, Peeler has deliberately created a compact settlement that accommodates development in order to protect the nearby rural countryside. Higher population settlement in Montpelier means less development pressure in the surrounding rural communities. Nonetheless, water quality and pre preservation of unique natural resources are key priorities of this plan. Um, I don't think I pulled this. I think I actually just rewrote what they were trying to say. Um, but uh, what are people's thoughts about the change? Kirby, it seems that your alternative language is the same thing as, well, it's using the same kind of wording as the second bullet point in the previous section, the whole compact settlement concentrate on, you know. So I think adding it in, adding it in as is would be. Redundant. Redundant, yeah. Um, yeah, I, th yeah, it's, I was going through this so quickly. I think what I, I think I pulled something from our materials from before and then modified it a bit, like a bit. So, so it's not a surprise to me that it's using the same, um, thing. Uh, I don't know what are what are what are thoughts here. I see, I see that I mean, there's there's a few different things trying to be said here. Um, just what we think about for the plan opening up the planning context, like what 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 do we want to focus on as a priority? Um,
How about just the, the last sentence in that paragraph? So, you know, improving water quality and thoughtful land conservation are critical priorities for Montpelier. Preservation, yeah, but just using the last sentence as an intro for this for this section. Um, I guess I I like calling out that. The reasons for why um, the the reasons why we're not going to be you know overly like like protecting natural resources at the sake of development is because we see the bigger regional picture. I like calling that attention to that. Um, and our plan is built around that idea to a large extent. Um, but the, you know, but then there's water quality and then certain conservation you know, measures that we take um, that are sort of aside from that. Unfortunately, like, other than this opening sentence, the rest of the text we have here is just about this natural resources inventory thing. Um, so like, like this part that's in gold here is gonna be the only like planning context type stuff we say. Well, I, and I'm going to ask the rest of you because I actually don't, I don't know the answer to this. Is it true that Montpelier's density and development has taken the pressure off the surrounding areas? Because it sounded like we were saying the opposite like an hour ago <laughs> when we were talking about all the development that there has been in Berlin and Barrie and everywhere else because Montpelier hasn't. Kind of we want it to. Times. Yeah, yeah, that's the theory. Our, 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 we, our plan wants it to. Yeah. Okay. We can, we can skip this one for now and come back. I think we're all, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm hitting a like 640 wall um, a little bit. Uh, just, um, we can we can go on and see what else we can, can cover here. Uh, I'm not sure that I flagged anything else in this chapter, but we can run through what's here. Um, Yeah, I didn't really touch this. This this did you know thing, I guess that's fine. I mean. Um, I often forgot, forget what water body is Berlin Pond. And then when I remember, I'm like, oh yeah, I drive by that all the time. Because it's that little pond on the way to the mall area, the Walmart area, right? That's right, right? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, these these things seem to be cut and pasted from other documents. They seem fine. Um, you know, the aspirations and goals as as 
the other chapters. Who's involved? This one's a lot shorter, which seems fine. Does anybody have any comments for these last sections? Okay, so let's uh, plan just to come back to, let's just think about the planning context for what we want to say about natural resources and, and revisit that later. Um, how are people feeling about looking at any of these other chapters or should we should we wait i mean we gave them a lot with housing i think um so so i think we could we can maybe just like to stop there and we'll we'll pick it up i think later um yeah i'd almost prefer kirby to be able to take a look through and then come in with my own if i've got some things i want to highlight i just i yeah. just didn't look at these ahead of time yeah, I mean, yeah, and I, I waited until today to do it. Um, so yeah, so let's let's just do that. And yeah, then folks, you can look at transportation and public and and uh, utilities and facilities also. Uh, and there's probably going to be more available. This all this stuff is, um, is on the plan website under its own folder now, which is. The, the folders, the storyboard folder. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's just let's just call that for now. I'm like, I don't know. I'm all of a sudden wiped out personally because it's it, it's a lot to go through these things, like talking it out loud. Easier to go through um, individually. Um, Mike had put on here discuss plans for public engagement on zoning amendment for our next thing to talk about on the agenda. Um, I'm at this moment, I'm not sure exactly what he was getting at with that. I thought, like, I think we had a plan for to do a pre hearing thing. Um, does anybody else have any recollection of what he might be referring to with that? Um, I, I think all I can say is that that maybe it's a good idea for we want to um, I think we do want to do a bridge commentary from the Planning Commission about the density issue and maybe about solar shading also since this stuff's coming up. We should probably we should probably go ahead and do one of those two bridge articles now and then maybe do another one closer to you know, when it's going to be before city council, just to space them a little bit. So that's my way of saying anyone interested in doing a first draft of a commentary for the bridge about either one of those issues, shading or density. I could, because I feel like first drafts are easier to do because then everyone will just <laughs> <laughs> rewrite it anyway, which is good. Um, I would take a stab at the density, but can can someone, I, I don't know that I have like the most recent info on what we were going to do on that. And uh -huh. let me see what I have here. So if someone could send me that, I'd be willing to just take a very, you know, broad draft and have everyone tear it up. <laughs> There's um, there's, there's an outline on the shared drive called CNU density. Cause this, you know, it, oh, okay. cause it's Congress for new urbanism thing is, 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 you know, what we're responding to with that. So it's under, there's a, there's a, a folder called zoning changes. Okay. Um, um, yeah. And it'll probably, I'll probably have some inaccuracies and stuff too, but I know it can, I'm, happy to help get something out there <laughs> yeah i think if you base it off that i think that's our uh, that was that was our general idea and we don't have to get you know in the weeds it's more about the you know policy reasoning behind it um so that yeah that would be really helpful and um, i would appreciate that a lot um but yeah it'd be good to get the ball rolling for um you know, the next, probably want to send it to the bridge in the next month. 
So for just get a draft and then have people tinker with it and then send it along. Um, I think that would be really helpful. That's that's something we need to do for public outreach. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure what um, what else Mike was was asking about when he when he put that on the agenda. Um, Kirby, wasn't he going to give us more zoning amendments? I thought last time we met, he said he he was still putting them all together and hadn't given them all to us yet. Um, yeah, I, I think he was doing that, but but you know, since he since he was unexpectedly out tonight, um, but yeah. Okay, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he was planning to give it to us tonight, though. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because that's 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 not what you know what he put on the agenda for that item. Um, but but yeah, hopefully by our next meeting he'll be able to do that. I was just thinking if he the zoning amendments that he's referring to in the in the agenda is it, is it really just the density issue that you think? No. Okay. Yeah, the it's um, because. The density and the solar shading and all of the other things that he that he's bringing to us are all going to be in together as part of the same process. So yeah, he was talking about all the things. Okay. Um, but for public engagement on all the things, but I, um, but he he had mentioned before that he had an idea for a sort of pre-hearing kind of presentation. Um. But since Mike had kind of a plan for that, I kind of dropped trying to come up with anything else. Um, so I think maybe he was planning to, to talk about that more. Uh, I don't know. We'll we'll hear about it next meeting. He'll be he'll I'm sure he'll bring it to us next meeting. Um, but yeah, you're right. We need we need his his list so that we can look at the actual drafts of the changes. Um, but I feel like yeah, at the last meeting we gave him a lot of feedback about what we were expecting to do with with a lot of those things. So hopefully not a ton more work as far as voting on changes with that stuff. But we do have to like gear up to do the to do the outreach aspect of it and then do the hearings themselves, which is going to take us one of our meetings. And we were planning to not meet in August. Um, so this might be it might be September when we do those hearings. We'll have to see. Could be July, but I don't know. Um, okay. Anybody have anything else on the zoning stuff? Um, okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and approve the minutes and then try to get out of here then. Um, I know I'm like beat all of a sudden. My functioning's not great. Uh, so, it, so if everybody could take a look at the minutes that were in the email Mike sent. From May 8th. our last meeting i'll move to i'll move to approve the minutes okay so we have a motion to approve the minutes from brian do you have a second i'll second second for maria does anybody need more time okay those in favor of approving the uh, minutes from may 8th say aye 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 any opposed Okay, so we've minutes approved. Um, so we'll come back next time. Uh, yeah, I encourage everybody to try to take a look in the shared drive at the uh, storyboards for the um, for the three that are in there, other than housing. Uh, and go ahead and yeah, feel free to leave comments and um, there might be some more added in the near future for the storyboard work. Um, hopefully, uh, Mike will get us the, uh, zoning amendment language before the next meeting. So people might, might have to be ready to review that as well. 
but that's kind of like what we've got coming up. Uh, so if, if nobody has anything else, we can, uh, we can go ahead and adjourn. Anything else before that? Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Motion from Ariane. We have a second. Second. Second from Gabe. Okay. Uh, anything else before we go? All right. Those in favor of getting out of here, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. If you oppose it, you know, you're free to stay if you want. <laughs> um, all right. See you guys soon. Bye. See ya. Thanks, guys.